Welcome to Real Physics. Today I'm talking about variable speed of light and black holes. Why considering variable speed of light at all? Because it was Einstein's very first idea when he thought about general relativity. And all this is in my history video and you might also look at my playlist of variable speed of light. Variable speed of light cosmology has a lot of intriguing features, very uh, much explanatory power, which you can check in this videos. Today I'm talking about black holes because you might ask, yeah, it's okay that we have black holes. Are they in agreement with this idea of variable speed of light? And before going into detail there, a couple of words about black holes in general. Some people claim, oh, we have seen a black hole. There is a picture and like in the M87 galaxy case a couple of years ago. And I think this particular case was just one of these attempts to get a free ride to Stockholm and Pierre-Marie Robitaille has done a very good job in dissecting this claim by taking a sober look at the data. What does instead deserve a Nobel Prize was uh, the observation of these stars orbiting the center of our galaxy. Fantastic observations which certainly deserved the prize. And well, they observed uh, with very much patience uh, a Kepler orbit. And if you do the calculation, you have a mass concentration of something like four million, more than four million solar masses, and you do not see anything. It's just black there. So the idea is not far-fetched if you think that there might be something like a black hole. I do have some reservations as a matter of principle against the idea because I think uh, this is explained in this video a little bit. I think it's based on a, on a misunderstanding of the gravitational constant. Gravitational constant we look as a God-given number but we should try to explain it, this and also this is a feature of variable speed of light that you, you have the potential to explain the gravitational constant. Anyway, from the observational point of view, we uh, also have stellar black holes. And a couple of uh, years ago, I made this video with Wolfgang Kunt. He's an expert on these matters. And the take home message is that you can't distinguish very well uh, black holes from neutron stars. And we come back to the issue of neutron stars later. If we just uh, review the uh, variable speed of light approach, What's the, uh, what's the idea? The idea is that the, verb, the speed of light is influenced by the presence of masses and if you're closer to a mass, the speed of light is lower. So the idea of linking the concepts would be quite natural if you think, oh, what about if the speed of light is zero? Can it go down to, to nothing? Interestingly, there is there are some experiments in, in uh, condensed matter physics and people were... Uh, I didn't go into detail of these experiments, but it's very interesting that people were able to stop light in the laboratory. And if we think about uh, this possibility in variable speed of light, it's not that easy. You might want to check this video about the technical details of realizing variable speed of light. And we started from uh, this important formula. The speed of light is calculated by the sum of all other masses in the universe divided by the respective distance. And this is Einstein's gravitational constant, uh, 8pg over c to the fourth power. So we have this formula. And if you take a closer look, I mean, if you want to make vanish c, you want to bring down this, you have to increase this term. And this is the sum. So uh, how to increase? I'm, I mean, you can just, <laughs> you can wait and, until the universe grows bigger and you have more masses. But the other possibility is go very close to one mass and you might split up this term and say this is the rest of the universe and this is the one mass I 
go very close in order to feel something like this uh, black hole and yeah and what happens if we i mean as kind of a limiting case we may uh, imagine that the effect of the nearby mass is the same as the rest of the universe and equate these two terms m over r and the rest of the sum and if you put again in the gravitational constant and Einstein's uh, constant then you arrive at this relation m over r would be c squared over 4 times the gravitational constants or equivalently what radius at what radius this would happen yeah well at the similar scale as the Schwarz third radius that means well something interesting could happen here it's a kind of reinterpretation of the Schwarzschild radius or two times the Schwarzschild radius would be the distance where the effect of the nearby mass is as big as the rest of the universe why is this not reasonable if we think about uh, elementary particles well if you let's say if we put in the mass of the uh, proton 10 to the minus 27 kilograms you arrive at an absolutely tiny uh, scale of 10 to the minus 54 meters that's 40 uh, orders of magnitudes away from any experiment because the real proton is 10 to the minus 15 meters so this is certainly not reasonable i'm not afraid of dying from mini black holes uh, sucking up the whole world if instead we assume nuclear density and we take proton and neutron as something important and you say okay at the same time there should be nuclear density and it should be a black hole and if you put these numbers in you arrive at the interesting scale of six kilometers and the mass is almost the same as the, uh, as the solar mass well this is the scale of neutron stars the order of magnitude in which we observe neutron stars uh, that's interesting but i don't want to be accused of circular reasoning i mean of course if you put schwarzschild radius and nuclear density together you arrive at this scale but let's remind that uh, nuclear density has a special meaning in variable speed of light cosmology as i explained in this video about the big bang or better called big flash if we think about small scales and if we try to understand the the, the microscopic uh, properties of matter let's also remind that yeah why why is 10 to the uh, 50 54 meters not reasonable because h Planck's constant prevents this so to speak and we have the very interesting coincidence Planck's constant is approximately pi over 2 c the speed of light radius of the proton mass of the proton and that is a relation which which is ex uh, equivalent to Dirac's large numbers as I explained in this video and on the other hand Dirac's large numbers also are can be explained or let's say understood in the context of variable speed of light so this is again the idea of linking the small scales to the large scales at, in the universe and if you think about variable speed of light uh, there are also people who have applied this idea to large scales even to active galactic nuclei. Chris Craw wrote this interesting paper I will talk about in a later clip and he tried to explain the behavior of jets and galactic uh, nuclei with d differential emissivity due to the variable speed of light um, yeah let's uh, just say that to conclude variable speed of light is is compatible there is nothing that contradicts the idea of black holes however uh, black holes are not yet backed by quantitative evidence because we do not yet have the observation of the Schwarzschild radius and so there is it, the field is open to, to reinterpretation and it's certainly inter interesting to have a look at many of these intriguing cosmological and astrophysical phenomena 
in this aspect. C equals zero is an interesting limiting case of maximal gravitational potential. Also, we might think about that. Of course, we cannot use the, the conventional formula any longer. We need to include H, Planck's constant. And well, the other interesting thing is that nuclear density has a fundamental meaning in variable speed of light. So you may say that nuclear, uh, sorry, uh, that neutron stars appear quite naturally. If you want to go into more detail, this is my paper in Annal de Physique, and this is a paper with my co-worker Jan Preuss about a Machian version of Einstein's variable speed of light theory. We had derived this, uh, that formula there. And of course, there's my book, Einstein's Lost Key, how we overlooked the best idea of the 20th century. Have a look at the new edition 2020. And if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy fundamental physics in general, subscribe to this channel.